Hi everyone, welcome back my subscribers. Thank you so much for being here and I'm so grateful to have you. And for anyone that's new, I'm Sharon Lynn. I'm a psychic and a voice channeler. And um, I had a message that was given to me on September 8th. Um, it was a personal message and I wasn't going to share it, but I feel that I'm supposed to share it because it may help some people um, that relate to it. I don't know how anybody's going to relate to it, but um, I asked God for to answer my question because of all the chaos that was going on and I was seeing so much out there and I said, God, just please, will you tell me what's happening, if you can? And I said, even if it's a page number in the Bible, because very rarely I get a page number in the Bible from Jesus and God, and maybe like a handful of times, and I've received messages in my lifetime. So I heard 635, so I'm like, yeah, right, I went to myself, okay. So then I heard it again. So I said, oh, let me get my Bible. So I got my King James Bible. This is my King James Bible. And this is the one I was showed a major thing a long time ago. And then I opened it up. And this is what I got. It's Isaiah 56 and 57. But my main verse that was so really important to me was, 5713. 5713. Anyway, so I didn't understand the King James as much as I understood what was in my student Bible. And you guys know I'm not religious, I'm non denominational, but I have a bunch of Bibles because I just like the Bible. I don't really, I'm not trained on it or anything, even though I am a minister. I'm a, a non-denominational minister for 20, 30 years. I don't remember anymore. But um, I am non-denominational. I don't really know the Bible that well. But I have this Bible I collected a long time ago from the Goads. And I've collected Bibles over the years. So I have different ones. And they have different versions. And this is my King James. And I have a couple more. But anyway, if you don't relate to anything like that, then this video isn't for you. I'm just going to kind of show you what I got, which made me feel so much at peace now. Ever since I got this, it has to be that God gave me this message because I just feel so much at peace since I got this page number. And I, I'm going to read it to you and try to let you see how you can associate everything that's happening in these verses to today. And I'm not going to give you names who I associate it with, but you can figure that out, whatever your views are on it, because I only know how I interpret it from my understanding. I don't know how you would interpret it or if I'm even interpreting it correctly, but I went into the student Bible, which was a little easier to understand because the King James Bible uses words that we don't use as much and sometimes they talk a little backwards so I wanted to be I thought I understood it but I wanted to be sure so I let me get another Bible so I went and looked in there too and that's I did understand it better after that so I'm gonna I'm gonna read a little bit of this to you and then if you want to listen to the whole thing you can if you don't you could just look it up the whole thing is kind of what's happening now, but my main thing that really helped me was 13, 57, 13 of Isaiah. And what it says in this one, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And I took that like that could be for any situation God's always there, so just trust in God and don't worry about anything. Just be the best you can be and just trust in God and let him handle all the bad situations or anything that I see out there and he'll be there to help me through or whatever it is. 
And so it just made me relax now about everything. And besides, like, that had to be God. Like, why did I get that page number? Why did it so relate to what's happening now? Like, I was like, no, this has to be. Um, so I don't know what you think, if it helps you at all. But so I'm going to read it out of this uh, student Bible that I got from the Godies a long time ago. They were singing ministry group that I used to be in Amway a long time ago. And they were some good guys and I got their Bible. So yeah, it actually says Code Ministries on it. But anyway, so any of you guys out there in Amway, I used to be in Amway a long time ago. I made it to 4,000, <laughs> almost direct, but I didn't make it because I left New York. Anyway, Okay, so first I read, read 57, but then I realized I have to go back to the beginning. So then I read the beginning. So it says, this is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without de desecrating it and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. So I took that like, as long as we're doing the right thing, then God's gonna accept us no matter who we are, no matter where we come from. And let not Enoch, and I don't know if I'm saying any of these words right either. So if I'm not, just, I'm sorry. Um, and let not Enoch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says to the Enochs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. To them, I will give my temple and its walls. A memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer, their burnt offering and sacrifice will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations the sovereign Lord declares he who gathers the exiles of Israel I will gather still other to them besides those already gathered so I feel like that was saying that as long as we believe in God and we just try to help as many people as we can help in our lifetime he'll give us more people to help and we all just have to help each other so then this says God's accusation against the wicked come all ye beasts of the field come and devour all the beasts of the forest and this says dog-like prophets don't we have some dog-like prophets going on right now okay this passage gives one of the most scathing denunciations of Israel corrupt spiritual leaders in the entire Bible. So I didn't take that as spiritual leaders. I take it what's going on in our world right now. And so you can take it however you feel, but I just feel like it's exactly what's going on in our world right now. And in the, actually in the United States. And it is happening in other places, but... I live in the United States, so I'm seeing it happen, really, in the United States. <clears throat> so anyway, Israel, I'm going to read a little the rest of this one. Israel's watchmen are blind. They all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. So remember I was telling you the watchmen, the watchmen are... Uh, in the other video, when Ezekiel came and he blows the trumpet, I would say so the watchman is the people 
that are supposed to be watching over the United States right now because that's what I was asking about when I asked God. So the people that are supposed to be watching over the United States, I would say, is our watchmen, even though they're talking about Israel in here. But this is just my interpretation, so you could say I'm totally crazy, but I thought I'd share it because it may help other people feel at peace too because God is saying everything's going to be okay. Anyway, and by saying that there are mute dogs in this passage, I feel like no one's speaking up. Speak up. Help us. Let us be who we are. Let us be free, you know, and let's all do the right thing and take care of each other and no lies, no conspiracy theories, no uh, fighting, no separating, no, none of that. Just all good things and start coming together in unity and be together in unity instead of fighting and everyone against each other and things like that. We need to come together as a country. We need to love each other and I can't even believe in 2020 we could be this separated and this is actually happening right now. It just makes me feel like this is unbelievable. I never thought I'd see it in my 63, um, almost 64 years and I can't even believe it, but it is. And so I'm going to continue in the Bible and I know I'm rambling, but this is what I was getting. So I feel like no one's speaking up and this is what's happening now and they're just letting everyone get away with whatever. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. And I look at that like, yeah, they need a lot of money. And that's all that that's all that is a lot of pe a lot of people it's all about money um, that are controlling things. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. Each seeks his own gain. Come, each one cries, let me get wine. Let us drink our fill of beer. And tomorrow we'll be like today or even far better. So they're saying like all they care about is money. They don't care about the people. They don't care about anything else. Now this is chapter 57. The righteous perish and no one ponders in all his heart. Devout men are taken away. I look at that like what's happening with COVID. Everyone's going people are dying and it's like almost like it doesn't matter anymore and it's like forgotten and we're just moving on and and it's just really crazy um and then it says and no one understands so that's kind of exactly what's happening now that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil those who walk uprightly enter into peace they find rest as they lie in death so i look at it like god saying the people that are dying right now, they're going to find rest in him. And they're dying, but they're going to find rest in him. But you come here, you sons of sorcerers, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom are you mocking? At whom do you sneer? And stick out your tongue. Are you not a brood of rebels, the offspring of liars? I was like, oh my God really you are talking to me like how could this even be happening so i think you should think about and ponder on that anyone who wants to you burnt with lust amongst the oaks and under every spreading tree you sacrifice your children in the ravines and under the overhanging crags the idols amongst the smooth stones of the ravines are your portion they are not your lot yes to them you have poured out drink offerings and offered grain offerings I look at that like what's happening really right now too I, I'll say no more anyway just just you you can read this and take it how you feel but I just thought I'd share the passage and just read it to you a little because in my mind, it's really exactly what's happening right now. You have made your bed on high and lofty hill. There you went up to, the, to offer sacrifices. Behind your doors and your doorposts, 
you have put your pagan symbols, forsaking me. You uncovered your beds and climbed into it and opened it wide. You made a pack with those whose beds you love, and you looked on their nakedness. You went to the Molech with olive oil and increased your perfumes. You sent your ambassadors far away. You descended to the grave itself. And this is what happened now too. A lot of our ambassador, ambassadors got re taken away and they're, it's saying that they're increasing their wealth with the perfumes. I look at it like everyone, they're increasing the wealth. You were wearied by all your ways, but you would not say it's hopeless. You found renewal of your strength and so you did not faint. Whom have you so dreaded and feared that you have been false to me? Nor pondered this in your hearts. Is it not because I have long been silent that you do not fear me? I will expose your righteousness and your works. OMG. And they will not benefit you. When you cry out for help, let your collection of idols save you. I can't even believe the Bible said it like that, sarcastically, like I told. The wind will carry all of them off. A mere breath will blow them away. But the man who makes his refuge will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. Now it says, comfort for the contrite. And it will be said, Build up, build up, prepare the road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and lofty ones say. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with him who, in the, who is the contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and revive the heart of the contrite. I will not accuse forever nor will I always be angry for then the spirit of man will grow faint before me the breath of man that I have created I was enraged by his sinful greed I punished him and hid my face in anger yet he kept on in his willful ways I have seen his ways but I will heal him I will guide him and restore comfort to him, creating praise on the lips of the mourners in Israel. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossed sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. So, I just felt like God was saying in that verse that I told you, he who trusts in him is going to have everything of his, including the holy mountain. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. And I don't know if that's going to help anybody and I guess if you are inclined to look at it, then read it and um, yourself and make your own conclusions. But I just know God spoke to me by giving me page number 635. And now I have no doubt at all in my mind that God spoke to me on September, it was September 8th. And then I've been mulling over it, and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to share it with you guys. And so I did that, and I even wrote it all down. I don't know if I forgot to tell you anything, but the bottom line in my idea, and what I think, and what I took away from it, which has given me peace ever since, is um, trust in God. He's got our back. I know that. So, just got to trust in God. He's got it covered. And I do trust in God. So, 
I just have to, every time I get afraid or worried or think about or see something on television or hear something or see something on Twitter or Facebook or one of those, and it gives me that feeling, I just have to say, God's got my back. It's all okay. It's all going to work out. Just trust in God and just oversee it. Like my daughter says, sit back and watch the show. And that's what I'm going to do. And I hope you will too. Anyway, I hope to see you soon. And I hope it helps somebody. Okay. Talk to you later.